So friends, in a new court filing, special counsel Jack Smith seeks to put Donald Trump's criminal defense attorneys on a very short legal leash. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, special counsel Jack Smith just submitted a new court filing in Donald Trump's criminal prosecution in Washington, D.C. for trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. This new court filing is called a motion in limine. It's just a fancy term for when one party, the prosecutors in this instance, try to limit the arguments or the evidence that can be introduced by the other party. Why? Because some evidence is inadmissible. Some arguments are improper. So a motion in limine is kind of a list of don'ts. Jack Smith is seeking to have the presiding judge, Judge Tanya Chutkin, order the defense team, the criminal defense attorneys, Donald Trump's lawyers, to refrain from making certain improper arguments. Why? Because they're improper. They would violate the rules of evidence or the rules of procedure or the rules that govern criminal trials generally. Now, motions in limine are entirely usual. I filed a ton in my 30 years as a prosecutor. In the cases I tried, defense attorneys filed a ton of motions in limine. Entirely usual part of the criminal litigation practice. Of course, there's nothing unusual about this case, right? A president trying to overturn the results of a presidential election that he lost and resorting to violence to do it through his angry mob that he set on the Capitol that day to fight like hell or you won't have a country anymore. Now go stop the certification of the election. Go stop the steal. And a very unusual case but an entirely usual, routine even, motion, a motion in limine. Well, let's start with the new reporting, and then let's turn to some of this new Jack Smith court filing. Here's the reporting from the Washington Post. Headline, special counsel asks D.C. judge to bar Trump misinformation at trial. And that article begins... Federal prosecutors have asked a judge to prohibit Donald Trump's attorneys from introducing at his D.C. federal election obstruction trial irrelevant disinformation that is often part of Trump's campaign stump speeches, including that President Biden coordinated with the Justice Department to bring criminal charges against him. Special counsel Jack Smith filed on Wednesday what is known as a motion in limine urging U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin to prohibit Trump from including certain arguments in his defense. Such filings are common in legal proceedings and aim to eliminate arguments at trial that prosecutors say are not supported by evidence or are irrelevant to the case and could mislead jurors. Among the potential defenses that Smith wants Chutkin, who is overseeing the case, to ban at trial that law enforcement's failure to properly prepare is to blame for the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Trump has previously made this claim. So now, friends, let's turn to the motion itself. There it is. United States of America versus Donald Trump, defendant. Government's motion in limine. Through public statements, filings, and argument in hearings before the court, The defense has attempted to inject into this case partisan political attacks and irrelevant and prejudicial issues that have no place in a jury trial. Although the court can recognize these efforts for what they are and disregard them, the jury, if subjected to them, may not. The court should not permit the defendant to turn the courtroom into a forum in which he propagates irrelevant disinformation and should reject his attempt to inject politics into this proceeding. 
to ensure that the jury remains focused on its fact-finding duties and applies the law as instructed by the court, the defendant's improper evidence and arguments should be excluded. And friends, this request from Jack Smith is well within the bounds of the law, as Smith goes on to make clear. Even if evidence is relevant, the court may exclude it if it involves unfair prejudice, confusing the issues, misleading the jury, undue delay, wasting time, or needlessly presenting cumulative evidence. And then Jack Smith zeroes in on Trump himself. Significantly here, where the defendant repeatedly has levied baseless political claims, evidence or argument that serves only to support a jury nullification argument has no relevance to guilt or innocence and must be excluded. Indeed, you can't encourage the jury to disregard the law and to acquit the defendant, and I'll tack on to the end of that sentence, for political reasons. You can't encourage the jury to disregard the law and to acquit the defendant for political reasons. Now friends, before we sort of tick through Jack Smith's laundry list of don'ts in this motion in limine, let's talk about some general legal propositions. You can't ask a jury to decide a case based on passion or prejudice or politics. Let me give you an example of passion. A defendant or a defense attorney can't argue, yeah, you know, my client committed these crimes, but if he's convicted and sent off to prison, his kids will be orphans. Do not convict him. That's improper. You're appealing to the passions, to the sympathy of the jurors. That is an improper argument and a judge can order a defense, a defense attorney, to refrain from making such an argument. Now, more to Donald Trump's game. You know, Donald Trump can't say, you know, yeah, I, I did these things, but don't you still want me as president for another term? Find me not guilty. You are trying to appeal to the jurors' politics. Or if Donald Trump said, uh, yeah, you know, maybe I did these things, but don't you want a Republican in the White House and not a Democrat? Find me not guilty. Improper. Can't do it. Or if Donald Trump said, yeah, you know what, I did these things, but don't you just hate Joe Biden? Find me not guilty. Can't do it. It's improper. You cannot appeal to the jury's passions, to their prejudices, to their politics. Now, let's just tick through some of the don'ts that Jack Smith lists in this motion in Lemonade. The things he wants Judge Chutkin to order Trump and his lawyers not to argue at trial because they would be improper. Claims of selective prosecution or vindictive prosecution or that the trial, the court's trial date, will interfere with Trump's political activities, none of these issues goes to the defendant's guilt or innocence, and all of them should be excluded. For example, a selective prosecution claim is not a defense on the merits to the criminal charge itself because it relates to an issue of law entirely independent of the ultimate issue of whether the defendant actually committed the crimes for which she was charged. Whether a prosecution was improperly instituted must be decided by the court, not a jury. And friends, this is a recurring theme throughout Jack Smith's motion in Lemonade. There are certain issues that may be relevant to the case generally, but they're not for the jury to decide. They're not for the jury to even hear about. Things like selective prosecution, vindictive prosecution, whether Donald Trump has absolute magical unicorn presidential immunity. He doesn't. But all of these issues are legal issues that are be, to be decided by the judge, by Judge Chutkin, before the case proceeds to a jury trial. 
So Donald Trump's attorneys are not allowed to argue or even raise before the jury things like selective prosecution, vindictive prosecution, presidential immunity. Those are improper arguments. They would go to just kind of nullify Donald Trump's guilt. They have nothing to do with whether the evidence proves that Donald Trump committed the crimes for which he's been indicted. So they're out of bounds. Smith then turns to other improper arguments. Trump and his lawyers are likely to try to make a trial. Throughout this litigation and in his public comments, the defendant has sought to blame others for the attack on the Capitol for which he is responsible, including law enforcement, military forces, unidentified secret agents, and foreign influence. The defendant should be precluded from introducing within the courtroom the disinformation he has propagated outside of it, outside of the courtroom. The defendant has signaled his intention to blame the events of January 6th on the Capitol Police, National Guard, and the district's mayor. Courts in this district have overwhelmingly rejected attempts by other January 6th defendants to shift the blame to law enforcement. And friends, I'm not gonna go through all of the don'ts that Jack Smith includes in his motion in Limine, but I do wanna to touch on one more because frankly, this is not only one of my favorites, but this is the one that I've been talking about for months and months and months. And this is why Donald Trump will be convicted at trial so fast it will make his head spin. The defendant's state of mind during the charged conspiracies will be a key issue at trial. Both parties will introduce circumstantial evidence of the defendant's state of mind, and the defendant may choose to testify himself, but the defendant should be precluded, prohibited, from eliciting speculative testimony from any witnesses other than himself about the defendant's state of mind or beliefs about the election or his claims of election fraud. And Jack Smith then goes on for several pages sort of explaining what he means by that, but let me tell you what he means by that. And I've been saying this for a very long time. You know, Donald Trump doesn't seem to understand or appreciate, or maybe he just doesn't care, that whereas he can say all kinds of nonsense publicly, right? He can talk about, oh no, I thought the election was rigged. I really thought there was election interference. That was a, a firmly held honest belief by me in my head. He can say that all day long in the public square. But once he's in a court of law and the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure apply, here is the beauty of the way the rules of evidence handle that kind of BS that a defendant spews out publicly. The defense attorneys will not be permitted, they will be prohibited from putting any witnesses on the stand to say, Donald Trump believed the election was rigged. He believed there was massive voter fraud. He believed he really won the election. Nobody can testify to that. No witness can testify about the beliefs or the state of mind of the defendant. That's improper evidence. So whereas Jack Smith, the prosecutors, can introduce any words that came out of Donald Trump's mouth because those are governed by the rules of evidence and the rules of evidence say when a prosecutor tries to introduce a statement of the defendant, it's admissible as a statement of a party opponent. But if the defense tries to introduce a statement of the defendant through another witness, it's inadmissible hearsay. The only evidence that the defense can introduce that Donald Trump really believed the election was stolen is if Donald Trump takes the stand and testifies about it. And let me tell you, he will be destroyed. 
on cross-examination. There's no way he can take the stand. So Jack Smith, in that part of his motion in limine, is putting the defense on notice of that particular don't. Nobody else can testify about what's in Donald Trump's mind. So all of his claims about magical unicorn immunity and declassifying documents with his mind and the Presidential Records Act letting him do whatever he wants and he really, really, really thought there was massive fraud and he really believed he won the election. None of that, none of that will come into evidence in this trial or the documents trial or any trial unless Donald Trump takes the stand and testifies and he can't and he won't. So ultimately, when Judge Chutkin is in a position, because right now the case is on hold while the appellate court handles Donald Trump's claim of absolute magical unicorn presidential immunity, the appellate court will reject that nonsense shortly after they hear oral argument in that case on January 9. I'll be in the courtroom that day watching the arguments and I'll do a video about it uh, shortly at the, after the conclusion of the arguments. A and then the case will be hopefully returned to Judge Chutkin. She'll be able to resolve this motion in limine, and I predict she will grant Jack Smith's request to put the defense on notice that they cannot make these improper arguments trying to appeal to the passion, to the prejudices, to the politics of the jurors and the case will be decided on the evidence and the evidence alone, and that is how a criminal trial should be conducted. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.